If you are performing the servicing work, you must lock and clearly tag the equipment. Shops require that lockout tagout for electrical panel devices be applied initially by an electric repair shop constructor. Then each maintenance person is responsible for placing their own lock and tag. Although many energy sources subject to lockout tagout can be controlled through electrical connections, others may require control through a combination of electrical and non-electrical means, such as valves, blocks, stops, and other mechanical devices. A few examples of such equipment include hydraulic presses, compressors, and fire suppression systems. If a breaker needs to be operated in a wall power panel in order to allow work to be done safely on a piece of equipment, you must give advance notice to the electric shop's crew chief. All equipment that's not directly lockable will have its panel breaker or disconnect device locked out or tagged out first by an electrician constructor and then by each employee working on that piece of equipment. Once locked and tagged, you must test the machine for de-energization to be sure the equipment is not just inoperable, but also safe to work on. All electrical equipment must be locked out or tagged out very carefully whenever it's necessary to work directly on the disconnect or the electrical controls. First, discuss with your crew chief the lockout required for the equipment you'll be working on. Next, ask the electrical shop's crew chief or their designated electrician constructor to initiate the lockout. The electrical shop's crew chief or the electrician constructor will de-energize and lock the equipment, tag it, and test to see that it is de-energized as well as inoperable. Each employee working on the equipment or involved in the lockout tagout will then apply their own locks and tags at all energy controls. The crew chief, or electrical constructor, will then hang a duplicate tag on the electrical shop lockout board. When work on the locked and tagged equipment is complete, employees working on the equipment will remove their locks and tags and inform the crew chief, or electrician. Only then will the electrician re-energize the equipment. Uh, I don't know how many people know that we didn't have a lockout tagout policy a few years ago, but there was... Uh, nothing standard or sometimes it was an optional thing whether or not they put a piece of tape over the breaker or you know how exactly it was done it was whenever or whatever they wanted to do and uh, I was doing a remodel job uh, doing the carpentry and there was several crews working in, in on the job with us and the electricians were changing circuits and and doing a lot of work in the panel, they had the cover off the panel and, and at different times, uh, different circuits were dead, but we needed to turn the lights back on and, and turn power on so we could do our work. Well, this one instance, uh, we had turned the power back on to do our work and the electricians hadn't been there for a day or so and uh, that, that afternoon they had came back to work, and, but they were working in a different area than we were so we didn't even know they were there and uh, they didn't realize that we had turned the power back on without having any tags or anything on it. So when they went up the ladder to, to work on this line or circuit, they uh, cut the line and this person found out that the breaker was on by coming off the ladder after he got zapped which isn't a good thing and luckily no one was hurt real bad and but it's also uh, the type of thing that if there was a lockout tagout policy in effect like we have now that is tells you exactly what to do and how to do it and and lock out those breakers this wouldn't have never happened lockout tagout procedures for the power generation division apply to powerhouses dams switch yards, and associated facilities. In power generation, operating employees have special responsibilities. They must identify the type of energy involved in the lockout, such as hydraulic, pneumatic, spring-loaded, or others. 
The operating employee must also have a clear understanding of the relative hazard level of the energy source. The major difference between generation and non-generation lotto procedures is the use of operating employees. They will operate or direct a maintenance worker's operation of energy isolation devices and placement of locks and tags. Generation lockout tagout procedures often involve group lotto. If so, a lotto coordinator or lead worker is called for. When a group lockout tagout is being performed, the lotto coordinator or lead worker must maintain an accurate daily listing of the authorized employees covered under the procedure. Be aware that in generation more than one test may be needed to determine if equipment is de-energized and inoperable. Once equipment is ready to be released from lotto, the coordinator or lead worker ensures that employees and any non-essential items are removed from the site and that equipment components are operational. The lead worker or coordinator then oversees the authorized employees removing their locks and tags, followed by the lead worker or coordinator removing his or her own locks and tags. Finally, the lead worker or coordinator notifies the operating employee so that the equipment can be returned to service. We, I was working in Unit 55 with uh, another worker and uh, both of the other units on each side of us were on and uh, making obviously a considerable uh, noise while we were working. That noise is not uh, constant noise, it varies uh, from time to time and the uh, other person I was working with was uh, a worker with lots of experience uh, in generation and uh, all of a sudden we Something happened and the, the noise within the unit that we were working in the scroll case changed dramatically. And I looked over at, at the guy I was working with and all of a sudden he started getting real flush and his eyes lit up and he's looking like a rabbit. You know, as if, if his ears could pop up, they would have. And all of a sudden he starts, you know, heading towards, towards the opening to, to, to jump out of the scroll case. And I said, I said what, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he said, I just don't, I don't feel, feel safe in here. And the, the point that, I'm, that I want to make here is that that was uh, at a time when we were working without any physical security, that uh, you heard a noise and you just didn't know if something was going wrong, if something that you didn't know about was occurring. And with lockout tagout, the way we work now, we've got physical locks and we have more uh, complete procedures to protect our safety, my safety and my fellow workers' safeties when we are working in those kinds of environments. When you find yourself working on low voltage or non-electrical equipment, connected to a high voltage clearance, there are two ways to proceed safely. Supplemental lockout calls for the clearance holder to expand his area of responsibility to include non-electrical and low voltage equipment. The clearance holder secures and de-energizes the low volt and non-electrical equipment places all applicable locks and tags, and then lists their placement on his clearance card. When the other electrical and non-electrical workers sign on to the clearance card, each worker is equally and effectively protected from high and low voltage as well as mechanical energy hazards, and does not need to place their own locks and tags. Clearance plus lockout calls for employees working on the equipment to individually place their own locks and tags. For low volt or non-electrical work not covered by, but within a clearance area, the worker or lead worker secures their own low volt and non-electrical sources and places all locks and tags. If they're using group lockout tagout, the lead worker will put all locks and duplicate tags in a lockbox and then each worker places an individual lock on the group lockbox. Like any other lockout procedure, you must always test for de-energization and inoperability and complete all applicable lockout tagout logs.